Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. Breaking news for you this evening. Fargo police are on the scene of an incident at West Acres Mall in Fargo where a woman was reported to be walking while holding a gun to her head. The events began unfolding around 7.30 this evening when scanner traffic indicated that police were being cautious about approaching an unidentified woman because she had a gun inside her waistband and was possibly driving. At some point, the woman arrived at West Acres Mall between Macy's and Best Buy, and that's when scanner traffic reported she was pointing a gun at her head. Stick with Valley News Live for more updates on this story. At 10 o'clock tonight, we'll bring you updated information from the Fargo Police Department. More than 2,600 households are breathing a little easier tonight now that their power is back on. As of 7 o'clock this evening, Cass County Electric reports that crews have restored power to all of the customers who lost it about 5 p.m. According to their website, a little more than 2,600 households in Fargo and West Fargo were affected by the power outage in an area from I-94 to 52nd Avenue South and between 42nd Street and 45th Street South. The cause of the outage, a piece of switch gear failed. Coming up after weather, an update on the attempted sexual assault at UND. Plus, West Fargo, arrest, West Fargo police arrest a man after he refuses to pull over for a traffic stop. But first, a warm start to our week. It really felt nice out there today. Justin, more warm temps to come? Yep, more warm air is on the way. It's going to feel pretty nice for Monday and Tuesday. Here's a look outside on our tower cam time lapse. The Valley News Live Storm Team Sky Cam Network shot in Fargo. Mainly cloudy skies and temperatures rising from the teens into the 20s today as we stayed mainly dry. Currently right now in Fargo at 26 degrees. It does feel like 14 with a westerly wind around 15 miles per hour. Moorhead at 23 and Grand Forks is holding at 30 degrees under mostly clear skies with a wind chill of 18 degrees. Other temperatures around the region, 21 at Wapaton, 31 Jamestown, 27 at Gwinter, 29 at Park Rapids, 28 at Detroit Lakes, 25 at Thief River Falls, 26 out toward Bedette, and 27 out toward Devil's Lake. Now the wind speeds mainly from the west at 5 to 15 miles per hour, and that's giving us a little bit of a wind chill out there. 20 right now at Detroit Lakes and Park Rapids, 19 at Fergus Falls, 20 out toward Jamestown Fargo, a wind chill of 14. So is Thief River Falls and Carrington, a wind chill right now of 17 degrees. Now, the satellite loop showing that we had cloud covers made our way through the afternoon, some isolated snow showers across portions of North Minnesota, northwestern Minnesota. We're starting to clear out across the region right now. And as we uh, zoom out, we had a little cold front, a weak cold front make its way through. So we got more of a northerly flow happening. So temperatures tomorrow are going to be down a little compared to uh, today, but we have a warm front right behind that. We're going to get back into the warm air as we go through the uh, next, uh, say, day or so. Here's the hour by our forecast and temperatures staying into the 20s this evening and through the overnight period. We're starting off into the upper teens and then as we go through the day on Monday, plenty of sunshine and uh, we will uh, see temperatures again get up there uh, mid to upper 20s in most places as we stay dry and temperatures fall through the teens. Another mild evening for your Monday night. So here's the hourly planner for tomorrow starting off with uh, plenty of sunshine and then we cloud up uh, later on into the evening on Monday. High of 28 degrees in Fargo, 20 out toward Roseau and Thief River Falls in to the mid-teens into Lakes Country, lower 20s into the Northern Valley and out toward the Devil's Lake Basin. Now the hour by hour forecast for Tuesday, staying dry across most of the region. Now we're going to see a slight increase in the clouds as we go throughout the day, plenty of sunshine before that. And then we're going to see temperatures again rise. We could be 30 to 35 across most of the area as we keep a nice light breeze from the south. Here's the photo of the day. It's called the Village Green Golf Course. Nice shot here in South Moorhead. Thank you, Corey, for this one. We'll use it in the background of the seven-day forecast. And recapping the next couple of days, 28 on Monday, 33 on Tuesday. Mostly sunny to start the week and then increase in clouds with some snow showers possible Wednesday night into Thursday. But temperatures falling all through that time period from 23 all the way down to four below zero for a high on Thursday. More cold air as we start next weekend. We're going to stay mainly dry for Saturday and Sunday, but high temperatures are only going to stay into the single digits.
Wow, it felt really awesome today, didn't it? Yeah, a and wind. after like three weeks of nothing but cold, know. you know, it's a nice re uh, respite. Yes, we'll enjoy the next few days, right? Yep. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. A man from Grafton, North Dakota, is behind bars after a police pursuit. West Fargo police were forced to deflate the tires on 42-year-old David Sheeby's vehicle after he refused to pull over during a traffic stop. It happened around 1.30 this morning in the 1600 block of 9th Street East. Instead of stopping, Sheeby took off and police pursued him. They set up a spike strip near the 1300 block of 19th Avenue Northwest and deflated his tires. He was arrested and taken to the Cass County Jail, where he's now facing a number of charges, including possession of meth with intent to sell, fleeing in a motor vehicle, reckless endangerment, and possession of stolen property. We have updated information on a suspect who flashed a gun at Minot Police in the Dakota Square Mall yesterday during a shoplifting investigation. Police say that 23-year-old Eric Skorek is no longer wearing the camouflage jacket he was seen wearing in a photo taken by an employee in the mall. The jacket was found in a nearby restaurant, but police believe he is still wearing the blue sweatshirt. They say he's about 5'10 with brown hair. Police responded to the Dakota Square Mall about 4 yesterday afternoon to investigate a shoplifting report. They say that's when Skorek flashed a gun, then ran out of the mall near the food court. We also have an update on the UND sexual assault investigation that occurred at Norrin Hall. Authorities say they have arrested a 17-year-old juvenile male but have not released his name because of his age. The suspect was taken to the Grand Forks County Juvenile Detention Center and faces sexual assault, criminal trespass and burglary charges. A second suspect has also been identified and charges are being forwarded to Grand Forks County State's Attorney's Office for review. On Saturday morning, a female student at UND woke up to find the first suspect trying to undress her. He was seen leaving with the second suspect in a gray-colored older model Ford Taurus. The city of Pelican Rapids still has a boil water notice in effect for residents after a water main break. The break happened uh, south of First Avenue, forcing crews to temporarily shut down the water main to make repairs. The advisory is in effect until they can test the water and fix that situation. It's unex uh, rather it's expected to be in place for at least another day. Every play, I think I played the whole game with them. I felt just as tired as they did. They had a tough loss last year, so it was nice to see them rebound and, and win over over them. So um, the championship belt, and we only have five on here now, so we have to add another one. You have the six already made. Well, it's ordered. <laughs> For the sixth time in seven years, the confetti flew in Frisco, signaling another Bison Championship win. Yesterday, the guys flew back to town, riding high on what's being called the six-pack. The six-time FCS Championship NDSU Bison touched down at Hector International Airport just after nine last night. Dozens of fans gathered to greet the champs back in the heart of Bison Nation. Players high-fived fans and even took some time to sign memorabilia. It has been record-setting cold, bringing lots of problems for people in the Northeast. When that polar air 